okay so this is the way you can the communication can happen now the thing is uh, so whenever you you know um, your operating system again talk to these guys jdk and jdk can talk to this uh, you know uh, your code so that you can see the output here okay now the thing is uh, whenever you write the code he is the responsible right to convert your scripts into a low level language or you know into a code which your operating system can figure it out okay so he will work as an interpreter so what these guys will do whenever in java code or is convert into something called byte code so byte code is a code which your you know java compiler can understand and this byte code you know compiler or jdk can talk to that byte code and that byte code he can convert in those byte code and so that the operating system can figure it out. so whatever the code i am writing so for example i am talking to you guys okay we have you know we are aware of different different languages okay we all are aware of so we cannot communicate to each other right so for example there is one interpreter who can communicate so can i say it's the language independent we are not dependent on the language okay so here is also the case is same jdk is taking care to convert your byte code into a code so that your operating system can figure it out so we can say java is a platform independent because from my end the code is same only he he is the guy who is converting the code he is checking what is the operating system based on that he is converting the code into that operating system. what operating system can figure it out okay so this is the case now so that is the reason we say java is a platform independent now this is jdk so what we saw we saw you know jdk is nothing but your theory plus development kit okay now jre is nothing but a combination of jvm plus your Library friends. Okay, so JDK is combination of JRE plus development kit, and JRE is nothing but the combination of JVM plus library. JVM means Java Virtual Machine. So from the name itself, you can figure it out. It's a virtual machine. Virtually, there is some machine. It behaves like a machine actually it's not a machine okay so whenever you are running your scripts this jr is coming into the picture so he will work as a virtual machine he will you know load your class okay whatever the class you are going to write it you load your you know code into and then accordingly you will put it into different memory and you will execute and interpret and execute okay so this is the architecture of java okay so actually if you you know uh, see for example jvm so first there will be some class loader so whenever you run your scripts everything will come into a class loader. okay then there are different different runtime memory so whatever the code you are going to write everything will come here first everything will get stored here okay now he will be communicating to this different different memory location now here the different different memories are there say heap memory then you know stack memory you know then you know a method um, loader and other stuff is there here. so he will check what are the variables what are the objects you are creating if it is an ob if it is you know um, so actually basically first of all all of your code will get stored here from here he will distribute into different memory. okay so those are little bit you know internally they are distributing if you are creating any objects and all they are going to store those into the heap memory okay so if you are you know storing some if you are creating some static methods and all these are going to store into the uh, you know or there are some stack memory everything is going to store into the stack then next execution step will store into the some other memory so it's nothing but different different memory is based on whatever the things you are using in your program okay 
Now, <coughs> after that, here is something called execution engine. So execution will start here. Execution engine will communicate to this memory and start. Okay. Then you know there will be some interpreter through which you will interpret and you know run your program. Okay. So this is the actually JVM. Okay. So this JVM will be responsible when you are click on the run button or click on the execute button, then this part will take care. Okay. So in Java, what the difference with the other programming languages in Java, there is something called JDK. JDK is nothing but your JRE plus development. Okay. JRE is nothing but JVM plus library. Okay, Java virtual machine plus library. Okay. So and and what is JVM? This is the high level architecture. So JVM works as a virtual machine. You can say you can consider these things as a machine. Some processes are good. So he will store, you know, all the code here, then he'll distribute it to different memory. Then execution engine will take care of people. So this is the architecture. Now, if we need to execute our program, okay, if we wanted to execute our program and we need to work on the Java, what do we need to do? We need this part. This is any already the robotic system browser. Okay. So uh, basically, we need this part. And we need this part where we need to write our script. So we need some tool where we can write our script. Okay. And we need this setup also JDK, JRE, and development. Okay. So let's first start Java. So let's first configure Java with this. So to configure Java, what we need to do, you go to Google. It can is the temperature. So you go and open the Google, and here you type download Java. If you download Java, you know. First or second link, you will see oracle.com. This will be directing to the oracle. So, oracle, this is the official website. You go there. Here, can you see Java 10? There are different options JDK, JRE. Since I will be developing my scripts, also, as you guys also are running also. I have to go to JDK. Here you can see different, you know, JDK downloadable link for different different operating system. Okay, so you have to click on accept license agreement, and you have to go with that. But you know, I request you not go with all this. Okay, because this is JDK ten. It's a latest one. So what you need to do, if you already have, that's fine. Don't change it. I'll tell you why. But if you don't have, just write download Java 8 and go to this page. The reason is Java 10 will work fine for your Java, I you know, for your web driver and all. No issues. But later we'll be using some tool called Jenkins, Git, and other stuff. So those are not yet compatible with the latest. That time you have to download. Okay, so that is the reason. If you already have the you know latest version of Java 9 or Java 10, don't downgrade it. But you so know, I didn't get that, sir. Sorry to interrupt. So uh, oh, why we are like downloading eight? So do you already have installed Java on your system? No, I don't have. Okay. You know, uh, Java 8, 10, 9, those will not make any you know, difference right now if you download anything because we'll be writing Java code and all. Okay. Then we'll be using our Selenium code, correct? 
but later we will be using some tool called Jenkins. Okay. Okay. I told you the course content, right? Yeah, so yeah. We will be covering Jenkins, Maven, and other stuff later. So those, yeah. those tools are not yet compatible with Java 10. Okay. Okay, their latest so, version are not yet supporting Java 10. Okay, so that's why we are like downloading yeah, it. That's why. So you may you get stuck. You have to. I mean, you will stuck there. Then you have to degrade it again. That time. Okay. Okay. So that is the reason I told. If you already have, let it be. Don't you know? <clears throat> downgrade it. But if you don't have Java, it's better to go with Java 8 right now. Okay. So if you you know search with the java 8 you will be in this page and here if you see this is the development kit you know the 8.171 so here <clears throat> you click on accept license agreement here there are different downloadable options see earlier we saw already there are two three options can you see here there are so many options because here Windows x86 means 32 bit, x64 means 64 bit. Same for other operating system also. They have both 32 bit and 64 bit. But from Java 9, they supports only 64 bit. You can't use 32 bit Java. So which one you are going to use? 32 or 64? That depends on your operating system. So how to check? Yeah, my computer you right click on my computer properties here you can see i'm oh, sorry here you can can you see system 64 bit operating system that means my os is 64 so i should go with 64 bit now all the operating system 64 bit that's so why they you know remove the support of 30 so uh this is the last one so what's your operating system you check i believe all of you are using windows okay or if you are using mac that is also fine mac only comes with 64 bit so it's directly 60 and windows 64 bit so you just click here so once you click here it's going to download the jdk exe file in your system okay see so it's downloading it's going to take some time. I am canceling it. It is going to download on exe file for so what do you need to do? You just need to double click on that. That's it and click next, next. Don't change anything. By default, it is going to select the location you will see background files. Java. Okay. And it will get installed on that location. That's it. So if you do that or this part is done basically we can install it okay so got it satish yes sir i got that okay so you need to click here and it will be downloading the dxe file just open the dxe double click on next 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 and you know complete the installation that's it okay. you Java installation part is done. Now <clears throat> you have to tell your operating system that you have installed Java. How you are going to tell? Okay, so for that we normally set the environment variable. So after installing Java, okay, in if you are using you know uh, in latest operating system, sometimes you know you don't have to you know, put your models. Your operating system is smartly able to figure it out. Okay, so you can just check maybe, you know, you open the command prompt, PMD, and here if you type Java space hyphen version, see it will tell you what version you have installed. See, once you click on next, next, and then install it, as I told you, by default, it's going to install under C drive. So under C drive, program files, if you go, you can see one folder called Java. If you go here, you can see this folder JDK, JRE. 
if you go inside J, uh, jdk can you see gre folder so gre is a part of jdk itself okay so as i told you jdk is nothing but combination of gre and development kit development kit is nothing but the other other files and all there will be here while running it okay and gre is nothing but jvm and library file so in the jre can you see jvm.dll under server folder so this jvm.dll is responsible for this jvm okay and plus if you go to the library i told right jvm plus library file if you go to the lib folder so can you see all these jar files these are nothing but the library files of java in these files, all the inbuilt APIs, Java function, method, class, interface, everything. So with the help of these files, Java can figure it out, you know, I know if you write some Java program and all. As for example, in the C, C++, we use printf, scanf, right? Mm -hmm. These are nothing but some English word. Okay, how your operating system can figure it out? What is this? So C++ compiler or C compiler taking care of it. Because corresponding to printf, scanf, there are some functions, some APIs are there. So he can execute those APIs. He can figure it out. Same in Java, whenever we will write, you know, say I will declare something string x equal to some string, integer, you know, x equal to some integer. What is int, string, or what are the different methods? Okay. All these things are present here within this jar file. So you'll see all these things you should be able to figure it out from that you know you can figure it out okay the, the compiler can figure it out okay so whatever the user is using your code will basically talk to this guy and accordingly he will give you the output so if you you know don't these jar files are not there if you delete those jar files code cannot figure it out what you are writing it's just nothing but like a, some english text for you okay Satish, got it? Yes, sir. Okay. These are the library files and these are the things. So you will see these folders. Now, if you go and type, you know, Java hyphen version, if everything is fine, you will get this version. That means your system is able to recognize what is Java. That's why he is giving you the version. Okay. So in most of the cases you know especially windows 7 and all you will not get it. if you type you know uh, java hyphen version let me type double a you know purposely i'm typing in case you are writing java hyphen version if you hit enter if you hit enter you will get an error message java is not recognized as in uh, Satish, can you mute yourself, please? Yeah, thank you. You can unmute and you know ask me if you have any doubt. So in you know normally if you write Java hyphen version, you might get this error message also. Java is not recognized as internal or external because he is not able to understand what is Java. So in that case, what do we need to do? We need to set the environment variable for Java. How to do it? So you go to that location wherever you have installed JDK. You copy this location. Remember JDK, don't copy the JRE folder. Okay. Do it carefully because some people you know copied up to this. No. You have to go inside JDK and copy up to this location. Now you have to set the environment variable. So do you know the steps how to set otherwise you can just write right click on my pc go to properties okay here you can click on advanced system setting it will be an advanced step okay then environment variable you click here 
then here see you can click here also here also so this is like system variable and this is like user variable for my user okay so you can click here also that will be available for all if you click under user variable it will be only specific to that user so better whenever we are creating any variable better to create under user variable only okay so you click on new here you write java underscore home and here you paste it hmm? click on ok button i am not clicking ok because i have already done it if you see java home and this is my you know jdk path and click on ok that's it okay so and click on ok and close it this is the way you can set the environment so once you set the environment very good so I have a question here. So what is this yeah. environment variable, sir? Environment variable is nothing but you know you have to tell your operating system where these particular things are located. Java. Okay, so okay. when you type you know Java hyphen version, you should be able to figure it out what is Java. Okay, basically okay. you have to tell him where your Java is. And where it is located. So, okay. You know, in sometimes, especially Windows 7 and all older operating system, they normally, you know, will not be able to figure it out what is Java and all. Okay, so later also, when you will be doing Java and AMD, everywhere will be setting the environment variable. Okay, and okay. what environment variable name you have to give? There are some standards, those are hard coded. You have to give those standards. Okay. Okay, like here, yeah, the environment variable name is Java underscore home. Okay, means what is the home directory for Java? You are telling your operating system. Same way you can see for A and D and, and other stuff also we did it. I'll talk about it. Okay. 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 So once you set the environment variable, then after that, if you write Java hyphen version, definitely you will get the version of Java because it knows what is the Java home directory. From that directory, it will tell you the version number. Okay. So if you are getting this version number, that means you can say your Java instance is done and everything is done. okay so now we are done with this middle part okay so clear this part yeah that's clear so this part is done we have you know downloaded jdk and uh, we, we saw jerry inside it we saw JVM and we saw different library files also. Okay. So this guy, you know, he will be responsible, whatever the code you are going to write, he will talk to your code and he will, you know, talk to the operating system and the communication can happen through this. Guy. Okay. So he is going to taking care of it. Now, this part is done. Now, next is this. Here I am writing my code, right? So where can I write my code? Some editor I need. Right? So you know in C C we used to write it in you know, one blue screen, turbo C screen. Basically, you know, I need some file where I can write my code. In Java, you know, you can write your code in uh, normal notepad also. But if you write in notepad, it's very difficult for the beginner. You can't figure it out whether you are writing something wrong or you know what you are doing. So normally in the industry, people are using some tool called Eclipse to write the Java code. Okay. So here also we will be writing Eclipse, and this part we will be doing into the Eclipse writing our code. Sometimes people use IntelliJ also. That is another tool. 
but you know 80% of the people even not 80 90% of the people are using eclipse so here also we need eclipse to write our code. this is nothing but just a tool where we can write our code. and for selenium everyone you can see using it okay so again i have to download eclipse so i will go to google here you can write download eclipse <clears throat> so the first link you can see eclipse.org slash download so this is the official website of eclipse <clears throat> so if you click here see whatever i am downloading everything i am going to download from eclipse you know of here, um, everything i am going to download from of here right? okay, whether it's java or it's... don't go to any third party web page and download anything you will be downloading lot of stuff okay. so what you need to do basically you know i want you to you know under your d drive or e drive or whatever you create some folder called say something like this selenium training or selenium project something okay the reason i am saying because we are going to download lot of stuff throughout the code okay and under that maybe you can create one folder called you know download where you can download everything because i noticed you know uh, because you guys are at the very begin beginner stage right so people download a lot of stuff you know at the end of the course they are coming i am not getting eclipse i am not seeing how it is my ant because something they downloaded under desktop something they downloaded under download folder something they downloaded under c drive okay so it's very difficult for them later so you create some folder properly in some drive under that you create one folder called download here we are going to download everything okay forward the course so all the things should be under okay <clears throat> so here also you know you go here and here you can see get eclipse photon so this is the version photon this was released you know in last couple of weeks only i think okay so these are the version they have mentioned so eclipse version was you know earlier version was neon then they came up with mars then they came up with oxygen and this is the latest one okay so do you have eclipse already you neon you photo now you have downloaded the latest one okay so i have oxygen okay so you guys can go ahead with this one only let us okay so you know uh, download this you know 64 bit eclipse because your operating system is 64 bit so you should go with the 64 -bit. so click on download or there you can see if you are in case you are using different operating system so can you see there is one more link called download package okay so you click here downloaded package download packages here from here you can select your operating system what operating system you are in so it supports three operating system windows linux and mac okay so select windows then you scroll down here can you see there are a lot of eclipse eclipse id for c c++ developer php developer javascript you know then earlier there was some called python developers also there and actually there are different different uh, you know eclipse plugins and tools are available okay. so um php developers and all so here we need the first one eclipse id for java ee developers enterprise edition okay we need this one. here you can see there are two options 32 and 64 now you can go ahead with whatever you want okay so here um, since my awareness is 64 bit i should go with 64 bit you click here you will be in this page you click on download 
So if you click on download, it is going to download the 64 bit for your Eclipse. Thank you for downloading Eclipse and it is going to start downloading. Okay. Can you say Eclipse JE Photon R Win 32 and all? Okay. Okay, Satish got it. The Eclipse download. Uh, yes, yes, sir. I got it. Yeah. Okay. So it is going to download by default in your download folder. So better you, you know, cut it and paste it under your download folder, whatever you have created. Because we, we need everything should be under this folder. Okay, so you will get a folder like this. Can you see my previous version was Luna, Eclipse JE, Luna, you know, this now Eclipse JE, Oxygen, R32, and all. Okay, you will get a zip folder like this. Now, what you need to do, you just need to unzip it. Okay, you right click, go to 7zip or you know, winzip, whatever you have. Or here you can click on extract all also directly. Or you can go to 7zip and you can extract here. You can just extract the file. Basically, you have to unzip. If you unzip it, you will get a folder. I have unzipped it, you know, under this. You'll get a folder called Eclipse. That's it. There is nothing called installation of Eclipse. You can just download and unzip the folder. That is enough. If you do it, you will get a folder called Eclipse, whatever the version you are using, whether you are using Oxygen or Neon or Photon. You go inside it, you can see all these things. Okay. And you can see one Eclipse.exe. That is the exe file for it. So that's it. You just need to double click on that exe to open that. Nothing else. To double click, it will open. Can you see it's showing oxygen because I'm using oxygen. It will show the version. And you will get this. Okay. So what I did, now our things are done. We I told you how to install JDK and all. I told you how to download and use it. Okay, so our setup is done. If it is open, that's it. Now, in some cases, sometimes you might get here some error message: key class file not found, Java file not found, and all. Actually, you know what happens? Uh, Thirty-two bit operating system supports thirty-two bit. Right, if your operating system is if your OS is 32 bit, okay. So 32 bit operating system, you have to download the 32 bit plus Eclipse also 32 bit. Okay. There is no other option. But nowadays, none of the OS are 32 bit. All is 64 bit. If your OS is 64 bit, you know, the 64 bit o operating system supports both 32 as well as 64. So you can download Java 32 bit plus Eclipse also 32 bit. Or you can use Java 64 bit plus your Eclipse also 64 bit. So there should not be any, you know, <coughs> cross connection. If your Eclipse is 32 bit, okay, and if your Java is, you know, uh, 64 bit, it will create a problem. Okay, so both should be same. Your Java cannot be 64 bit uh, and your Eclipse cannot be 32 bit. This is not possible. Otherwise, you will get an error message. Or your Java is 32 bit or Eclipse is, if your Java is 32 bit or Eclipse is 64 bit, then also you might get this error. Okay, so that you cannot do. Make sure you are in the same. Both are in 64, both are in 32. Sometimes people come back and say, hey, Vishak, I have all 64 bits, but still I am getting an error message here. 
okay so when you open eclipse you might get error message here java file not found class path not found or something like that related to java that is only because your problem is either you have not installed java correctly <clears throat> or you have not set the environment variable so step by step you go first install jdk then set the environment variable then type java hyphen version what is the version okay it's showing or not that means my java part is done now you download eclipse 64 bit and make sure both are so sometimes people come back and say, oh, though I have, you know, 64 bit Eclipse, but still, you know, I can see there are some issues. Okay. Uh, 64 bit Eclipse and 64 bit. So what happens, you know, when you get the operating system from your organization, sometimes there may be by default installed 32 Java. So somehow, you know, your Eclipse is pointing to that Java. In such cases, what you need to do, go to the control panel and delete all the Java flash. Okay, so there will be no Java and freshly installed 64. So there will be only one Java and your Eclipse will have no other option but to point to that. Okay, and go ahead with <clears throat> Now, if you do this, then definitely you should not get any error messages here. Now, this will open. Here it will ask you see some workspace location. Workspace location is nothing but a location where we are going to create our project, we are going to write our code and everything. Okay. So here also by default it will select C user document settings and all. Okay, or desktop. So don't do it under that. Whatever the folder you have created, right? I told you create one folder and create one, you know, under that create one folder called download. So don't create any folder called down. I mean, don't go to that download folder. The folder you have created, like Selenium project or Selenium. Select that location. Okay, here. Select that location, then slash workspace. Okay. So everything, will, all the code will be there under that. Otherwise, under one folder, everything will be there. Download your code and all, and you will get confused. Because we'll be writing a lot of code throughout the. Okay, Satish, got it? <clears throat> yes, sir, I got it. Yeah. So you create one folder called, you know, say Selenium training or something. Under that, you create one folder called download where you copy all the downloadable files because we'll be downloading a lot of stuff. Under that, you create one folder called workspace. Workspace means where our work will be there okay and you select that folder location workspace you can get multiple folders also and select it but as of now select that only that's it and then click on launch if you click on launch your eclipse is going to launch if you are opening first time it might take some time Okay, see it's open Eclipse. So on the first time, it's going to take some time. Okay. So, and when you open the Eclipse first time in this location, you will get some welcome screen here. Okay, so here you will just close that welcome screen. Then you will be seeing in this one. In the left side, you can see there are a lot of, you know, project package explorer. Can you see there are a lot of things? For you, it will be empty for opening first time. Since I have created, see, for different batches, I am creating Selenium, July weekend, June, you know, Selenium weekday, June. So I can see a lot of stuff. For you, it will be empty. <clears throat> now, we have to write our code. To write the code, okay, it is mandatory you have to create first one project. So your project is nothing but you know you can say same, I mean same thing, whatever you can understand with that name. Like you are working on some project, it's a banking project. So you create one project name called banking. Okay, you are working on some projects, uh, maybe um <clears throat> Tata Sky. So you'll be creating one project called Tata Sky. So under that you will write all the code related to project okay so first thing is you have to create a project so how to create go to file new you can click on java project 
or you can click on project also if you click on project again you you have to select java project so you better directly click on java project in case you are not getting these options here java project or project so you go to other okay under that you know you can see something called java project okay so select it and click on next if you expand general also you can see project you select it click on next then it will show you different options so in here basically i am saying you to select the java project okay so you just click on new you select java project or click and if you don't get java project in case click on others but java, java project will be there by default okay and here you select java project and click on next see first of all it's asking me the project name name of the project i have to give some name of the project. any name you can give you are working on tata sky right you know tata sky project or what or you are working on say you are working in icici bank project so the project name is icici bank or something okay here i am giving selenium underscore july wait okay i'm creating selenium underscore so that will be easy for me to figure it out which project i need okay can you see by default it's selecting that jre location if you have multiple jre you can select it and from here you can you will see a lot of jre options you can select whatever the button okay but then you use the default jre okay so i am selecting this jre and that's it you don't have to do anything it will be by default this will be selected you have to give the project name here then you click on next can you see one project gets created weekday june here it is showing source folder src folder okay this is a project we will talk about it this is a library file okay this tab can you see it's automatically select jre system libraries if i expand it see these are the jar files i showed you right see the path c program files java jre library folder basically since we have selected this right jre so it's selecting everything c program files java jre library see it's selecting all these jar files okay so by default it's taking all these jar files to the project in case it, if it is not taking okay you can't use as i told you these are the apis you can't use any java function method and all you will get an error message okay so because in previous page you have selected java jre folder so here you can see it will automatically attach all the jar files Okay, it will not copy paste to your project, but it will just show you the path. From this path, it is attached. Okay, system library. And you click on finish button. That's it. So one project gets created, July. If I expand it, CGRE system library, you can see all the library files coming from program files, GRE location. And there is some folder called SRC. SRC means source folder okay so that's it my this part is also done eclipse okay so clear so this till now you have to install eclipse and eclipse yeah yes yeah, okay. now if you go to that location okay so wherever you have created workspace in case you forget that location just right click go to properties here yeah, location so you can see the location go here so it will open the location okay 
So you under workspace folder you can see your project. Go inside it. So can you see SRC folder what I can see here? But you can see one more file called one more file folder called bin. You go inside it. That is empty. I talk about bin. You go SRC. That is also empty. You can see other two files. So if I right click and open it in Notepad plus plus, you can see you know some XML files, some parameters, SRC output is the bin folder. Your source is nothing but your SRC folder. All these things it's seen. Also, another is project. If you open it, showing you have created the project with this name, and you know a build spec. You know how to generate the build using Java Builder, which is present under. Okay, it's basically showing some package name in Eclipse. You will get to know later, but not right. Okay. These are the you know some files are there. So what are the use of these files? See, this is the project, right? I can create one folder manually also like this. I can create one folder manually also pin. I can create one manually folder for us. But does that mean it's a Eclipse project? No, not a Eclipse project. How Eclipse can figure it out is a Eclipse project. These are the two configuration in XML file through which Eclipse can figure it out. Okay. So you can create some folder manually also, and if you can configure those files properly, Eclipse can figure it out. He knows okay, this is one of my projects. Okay, so later we'll see when we'll be going to the advanced topic, Marvin and all. We'll be creating, you know, downloading some folder structure. Okay. And we'll generate those two files and we can import it into Eclipse. We can use the Eclipse project. Okay. So this is what the configuration file or XML file, okay, through which Eclipse can figure it out. This is one of my project. Yeah, and Eclipse can use it. Otherwise, Eclipse cannot use this. If you delete these two files, you will get some error. Okay, now, but okay, everything is fine. Only thing I can see one bin for that. Under SRC, SRC means source, under which we need to write our code. Now you right click on SRC, new. I have can create, okay, class I'll create later. You can create package. What is package basically? Package is nothing but you know, it's some folder. You need to organize your scripts properly. It's for example, I gave you say 100 songs. Okay, I told you you store it, I will take it from you data. You organize it. So what you did, <clears throat> maybe you put everything under D folder. D drive. Okay. What you did under D drive, you created two folder. One is Hindi, one is English. Accordingly, you distributed it. And what Sadish did, he also created two folder, Hindi, English. Under Hindi, he created you know different folder with different artist name, like Kishore Kumar, Lata Mangeshkar, and Inside that folder, he put Kishar Kumar Sans, Lata Mangesh Under English folder, same way, he created, you know, different folders with the artist name or, okay, accordingly, he put it. So, that's it. So, when I'll take, I'll normally take it from him because it looks like more organized. Package is nothing but you can, you know, do it proper, uh, you know, you can organize your project properly. Okay, so it's always better to create a package. Package is so, package is nothing but some folder. So here also, since I, we are going through the Java class, I'll be creating some package for Java. When we'll go through the, then with each and every topic, I'll be creating one one folder. It will be easy for you when, I, when you, you know, you want to look into that, you know, program. Okay, which program you need to see. So packages are nothing but, you know, some folder which you can organize. In the framework, actually, you will see the use of packages. Okay, in framework, basically, <clears throat> Say I need one folder where I'll write all my test cases. I need one folder where I need to generate the log files. Sometimes I need to take a screenshot, right? So instead of storing everything same, I'll be creating one folder called screenshot. I'll take whenever screenshot anything fail, you take a screenshot and store it inside that folder. 
it's like more organized same way you can create some package so <clears throat> say i am creating one package called abc it's saying discourage package name package name always starts with the lower key so it's not like it's an error it's an warning okay because i gave capital a normally you can give no issues okay you will not get any error nothing everything will run fine but they are saying it's the industry standard we always give starts the package name with small letter okay it's just a standard nothing else since we are using java i'll create a package called the learn java okay don't create any package name with the name called java or something because java those are some keyword which used by java or java string or something like this because when we will be using those you know keyword in java then he will get confused you are calling your package or you are calling the you know keyword from the java okay so don't do like this so create something you know which is not there learn java or something click on finish this one package gets created this is the use of the package so see if i go to my i have created one project itself for java you can also create under their source folder see i have created different package it's very easy right i need to know what is abstract class i know it is there under this package so i can just go ahead and see okay these are the classes for us okay i need to know some string function i don't know where it is but i have created one package called string so i know if i expand it i will get all the related to this. okay i know i need to know what is you know inheritance so i have created one package called inheritance so i'll just directly go and i can okay. if i don't create a package everything i put it see under this i have a lot of class from here it's difficult see here i have array also here i have exception handling also here i have you know java enum class also here i have for loop okay maybe here i have while loop so everything is you know together here so instead of that if i create a package for different different you know uh, what to say different different concept it's easy for me to go and okay so package is nothing but some folder you can organize it now i created one package called learn java if i go here source folder see i am seeing the same package it is empty right now if i go to the bin folder i can see the same package it is empty now i have to write my code for that under this package right click new create something called class so we have to write the code into the class click on the class it's asking me to give the class name okay if i give the class name say basic java or basic one i am getting warning message because he is saying uh, there is a standard class name should start with a capital letter it is not enter so better to start with capital okay as of now i will talk about all these things later but right now i am not talking about it i am telling you whenever you are creating any class select this checkbox public static void main okay whenever you are creating any class select it why you need to select don't ask me i have to explain the meaning of each everything what is static what is void what is public what is main and all okay so right now make sure you are selecting this while creating a class and click on finish okay so you can see this class so now if i go to you know my source i go to learn java i can see this class see so if there is dot java extension if i open it see here also if i want i can write okay my program if i go back see i can see the program 
or you can write it here you can see under source folder you can see dot java if i go to the bin folder again learn java package if i go inside it i can see the same file but what is the difference that is dot class this is the extension that was dot java this is dot class if i right click and open say i can't read it so this is called executable files okay so these files are used to execute that's why i told if i need to develop my script i need jdk if you need to only run your scripts you need jre is enough so if you have only jre i can share this executable you can run my program in this way i don't need to share my code also. you can't see my code inside that so it is encrypted so sometimes you know we will be sharing only the executable files with the client we don't share the code they will just execute our program they will run their scripts their server and their what is okay so this is what is executable files later we will see when we will talk about other tool and and all we will be using this executable file and we will execute now in the eclipse you know when you click on the run button eclipse will execute data executable Without executable file, he cannot execute. But here it is already creating, right? Without clicking on run button only. So the reason is, if you go to project, can you see build automatically? This option is checked. If you uncheck this option, now it will not execute. It will not create a hot class. But if you execute, then definitely it should, because otherwise it cannot run the program. Okay. So by default, normally we check this option build automatically. So just try this option build automatically and see. Okay, when it's creating and all, create one class, go to the bin folder, you'll see it will not be there. Okay, then check it, then click on the run button, it will be there. Okay, so and by default, you select it. Here you have to run your JavaScript. Oh, sorry, Java. So see, you cannot run anything, you cannot write anything outside this class. Okay, since we have selected that checkbox, so we are getting this option. We'll be writing our code inside me. We'll not write anything outside me. Okay, otherwise it will not be considered as well. Okay. Here, let me, you know, write my first program. Say I want to print something. Print something. System dot then out dot println using println i can print them so i am printing learning java saving it okay so just write system dot out dot print ln learning java i am running my code here my scripts here if i run can you see it's printing learning java or uh, that is showing under console the console you can see the output okay so system dot out dot print and is a very important thing which will help us you know debugging purpose which will be very helpful for us so you see the details of you know this command each okay so clear Satish? yes sir So, you know, uh, so you make sure ki you have installed Java, you have installed JDK, set the environment variable, you are getting the path properly. Then make sure you have downloaded, you know, Eclipse. You open Eclipse, you can create one project, create package one and under that create one class. And, you know, write some, you know, basic scripts any single scripts just you know system dot dot print and run it and you can make sure that you are getting the output. if you're getting the output that means all your configuration everything is done and means everything is fine so we can start with the job okay. so you just you know uh, okay. do all this setup today and uh, you know next class we'll go more about that okay sure, sir. If you are getting that Java bill, you don't need to. Okay.
so i'll start sharing you know the code slowly from uh, next class okay or if you need anything i can share so what you can you can let me know your you know ideas it is for week day right july week day yeah, Satish, maybe you can ping your ID in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Geo. Why, yeah. Would you be sharing the uh, recordings as well? Uh, I think uh, they are going to share it. Okay. I don't know where it gets stored. Okay. Okay. And I'm not sure also whether it's taking or Let's see. I'll see. Okay. Sure, sir. Okay. Zero four. Ready? Okay. So you know, uh, next class will be day after tomorrow. As I told, two more classes I need for this uh, my previous batch. So I told them to come on Tuesday and. Tuesday and Thursday, I told them. Okay. You come on Wednesday and Friday. Wednesday, I will tell you. And most probably it will be Friday or maybe Thursday if they told I need two days there. Then I will take take their class because it's the frame of class going on. They might need some time. Okay, it depends. It depends on them also. Okay, so from next week it will be five days. Hopefully it will be done with this week or maybe one class, maybe next week for them. I don't think it will go next. Okay. So from next week it will be five days every day. Okay. And as day I'll let us know. Or if you guys want to, yeah, Satish, you can drop if you want to. We are done. So next will be we'll meet on Wednesday. Wednesday is it? Wednesday 7 30 in the morning. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. 